the second largest payment processing company in the entire world, just gave way to fiat on-ramp for crypto and digital assets. And I got to tell you, I think this is a step in the right direction, but there's some other parts about that's going on in the world today, which are not so bullish. So what I am talking about, if you don't know, is Stripe. Stripe is the, again, the second largest payment processor uh, company in the entire world. I use it personally for my uh, businesses, for my online transactions, and uh, it's pretty reasonable, PayPal being the number one. And this just came out actually on May 4th. I didn't hear too many people talking about it. I have been out incognito doing a lot of things with family, so I couldn't cover this, but I thought it was pretty interesting because I didn't see anybody talk about it anywhere. And this is what's going on. So Stripe is going to be hosting Fiat to Crypto on-ramp. And what I find surprising about this is that they're going through with it in the United States, even though the United States is the worst place for crypto, thanks to the SEC and Gary Gensler. This is to help US-based customers purchase crypto, but there's some other documentation which shows that it's actually gonna be global. Stripe now offers two implementation op op options for its on-ramp, an embeddable on-ramp, which is crypto purchasing widget directly into your own website or app. So you can embed it right away and you can have a fiat on-ramp. Or if you don't want to deal with that, there's a Stripe hosted on-ramp at crypto.link.com to which companies can direct their US-based customers. So when we take a look at Stripe itself, just so we know, uh, it has a market share globally of almost 20%. PayPal is up there at 42%, but Stripe is right behind it. And then also, as far as global availability, they have, they're in 46 different countries. So this story, I think, uh, just didn't get enough traction that I think it should, especially for Fiat on-ramp. And then remember when it said there was, there was two different types? So there's two different types for what it's offering. First, the uh, embeddable option. And then there's also one at crypto.link.com, which if you don't want to embed it onto your sites, you just go to this part. So the question I had was, well, how much is it going to cost? Because that's the big thing. How much are we talking about here? So there's two types of fees for just as far as the link.com option. So there's processing fees, which is 3 to 5%, which I got to tell you is pretty steep. Let's be honest. 3 to 5% of your order value. And there's also network fees, which are gas fees. So not only are you going to be paying Ethereum and everything that's an ERC-20 token, 3 to 5%, but also the gas fees. So people will say, well, who wants to use that? It's a great, that's a great perspective. So me personally, I was like, why don't we just do the embeddable option? So I couldn't find any documentation about how much it was. So I had to reach out to customer support at Stripe. And after about 30 minutes or so, this is the answer I got. They said, look, if you're gonna do it like that, your, if your current Stripe fee pricing is 2.9% plus 30 cents purchase for successful card charge, it's the same price when you accept fiat. So in other tiers, it could be 1.99%, depending on the volume that you do, or it could be even lower than that. It all depends on your volume. So I thought, well, that's not too bad. And what I was thinking about specifically was how it's gonna compete with MoonPay. MoonPay, in my personal opinion, is garbage. And I know people, some people love it. I don't know why, you're paying 5%. Now you're paying, they, they actually got wise and said, okay, we'll do 4.5%. So MoonPay, if you're gonna use like a, a ledger or some other different types of uh, fiat on-ramp, it's 4.5% or $4, whichever is higher. So usually you're gonna be paying 4.5%. And when I see something like Stripe come along, I'm like, okay, if they have this embeddable option between two and 3%, you know, plus gas fees, what are they going after? And this is where I was talking about. I think they're going to go for a global market, not just in the U.S. And it just talks about here, Stripe, Fiat to Crypto on-ramp. There's three different areas. Crypto exchanges allow users in more than 180 countries to deposit funds via dozens of local payment methods with Connect. Pay out fiat currencies in 45 plus countries. Wallets, stay focused on building and DeFi products, uh, service APIs through Stripe. And NFT marketplaces, you can scale marketplaces and onboard buyers and sellers within seconds for any kind of marketplace, including art, blah, 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 blah. So when I take a look at this, they are directly competing, I think, with MoonPay. And I got to tell you, thank God, let's see what happens. So for that, I think it's a pretty big story. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And also, just if you've been living under a rock, I just want to cover this real quick, to get this out of the way, CPI. So... When we take a look at uh, what's going on year over year, the consumer price index and what the inflation is, you probably know this already. Everybody's covered this. I'm not going to beat it uh, dead horse. And uh, US CPI, it was 4.9% year over year. US core CPI, 
uh, checks on energy and food is plus 5% year over year. And it was pretty much in line with expectations. And the markets explode with a whopping 0.3% for Bitcoin and the entire market, crypto market goes down 0.2. I think there was a little bit of a rally in the traditional markets, but I don't really have much in that, so I really don't care. And that's what we have right there. And of course, we can just see that some people were complaining about this, but I got to tell you, I mean, if we take a look all the way back to January 2022, between CPI and core CPI, I mean, it's fluctuated quite a bit, but I mean, we are going down. Isn't that the whole point of all these Fed rate hikes? So I see this as good news. Maybe we'll see another 25 basis points hike uh, next month, and maybe they'll just stall out. I don't think they're going to cut, but that's what we have. So I see it as bullish. Also, some more good news. Uh, Ether, staking deposits top withdrawals for the first time since uh, the Chappelle upgrade or the Shanghai upgrade. And there's a, a website. I'm going to link this in the description. You can check this out. All you need to know is this. I could go over the whole article, but it's boring. The net staking balance for ETH, this is how much has been withdrawn so far. 2.49 million ETH. That's a lot. But this is how much has been deposited. 2.79 million has been deposited. So this is the first couple of days or so when the deposits have gone above and beyond the withdrawn. And that to me is a bullish signal that people do believe in Ethereum. They do believe what's happening and they're reinvesting into it. So I can see that is good news. Now, I have just told you some pretty good stories, have I not? It's pretty bullish, but you're not gonna get off that easy because there are some bearish things that are going on within the world and you need to be aware of what's going on. And what I'm talking about is there was a, a summary a report where the interest in crypto plummets among family offices survey. So this is from Blockworks. I just find it interesting because a lot of places will just only talk about the great things and it won't give you a perspective of really what's going on everywhere because it's not all unicorns and moon drops and rainbows. It just isn't. So just be aware that numbers don't always go up and there are some things ahead. So roughly, 26% of family offices are invested in crypto, according to a new Goldman Sachs report, which is up from 16% in 21. That sounds pretty good, right? Well, we're doing pretty good. Just wait. But those that have not invested and show absolutely no interest in jumping into the space going forward has grown much more from 39% two years ago to 62%. So you've pretty much got almost, well, not double, one and a half times of people going, you know what? We weren't sure about it. Now we're really not sure about it. We're not going to do it. The respondents that are potentially interested in the asset class fell from 45% to 12% over that span. Those are the people we wanted to get, and we couldn't get those people because they see the problems that are going on in the crypto and digital asset space, all the frauds on the rug pulls, also the Gary Genslers and the SEC coming after everyone. Why would you want to get into this space if you're a family office? To me, it doesn't make any sense either. I think it's a good uh, hedge against uh, as far as a store of value for different things. But in all honesty, I can see where they're coming from. The survey was from 166 family offices from around the world. Now, they did say that the belief in the power of blockchain technology is a top reason for their involvement in the sector. And they put a bunch of different reasons. Portfolio diversification. I got to agree with that one. Uh, DeFi, crypto is a store of value, only 8%. Speculation, eight, that sounds more reasonable, and so on and so forth. So there's that piece. We're losing interest in, in family offices. Also, what we've been talking about a lot is for tokenization of assets. And Larry Fink, who is uh, the BlackRock CEO, 10 trillion assets under management, has been talking about that quite a bit. Tokenization of assets, which got everybody talking about, great, what's the chain going to be? Here's the chain. Microsoft. Goldman Sachs and other partners, they're going to start their own new blockchain network. <laughs> so when Larry Fink was talking about all these things, maybe it was just smoke and mirrors. Here's what we got. A new blockchain network aimed at financial institutions in the works. Uh, this was announced uh, today, or actually a couple of days ago. The Canton network will be a privacy-enabled, interoperable blockchain network aimed at those working with institutional assets. It allowed the synchronization of financial markets that were previously siloed. So there is one thing here that interoperable blockchain network. So maybe this is private, but maybe they will interact with other chains like it says right here. So that could be good. But the primary is not going to be Ethereum. It's not going to be Bitcoin. 
It's not going to be Avalanche. It's not going to be Solana. It's going to be their own privacy network, which I don't think is really, really crypto, but we'll let that lie. So the network will begin testing in July. Participants include BNB Paribas, CBOE Global Markets, Digital Assets, Paxos, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, Deloitte, and a host of others. And Kathy Clay, the, the executive VP, says this. This is exactly what Larry Fink said. The tokenization of real-world assets may offer an unprecedented opportunity to create new market infrastructure and drive efficiency in the trading of products across the globe. So you got to ask yourself, there's waning interest in uh, some family offices, also in some of their institutions. And now we've got these big players going, you know what? We're going to do our own thing. We're not going to use anything. Maybe some interoperability down, down the road. Why is that? Why, is, why are people shying away? A lot of things that we just talked about, but there's also a, a big one. This place is turning into a casino. Now, this is going to be a very unpopular opinion, and I will not dwell on it too, too much. But there was a tweet. Lady Crypto was pretty good, and she brought it out. And she said, yeah, this is a, a casino. And in a lot of these meme coins, you can invest whatever you want to. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want to. I'm sure it's great for you. But to me, it doesn't lend to legitimacy. And uh, if you're making money, fantastic. That's good for you. But just know that all these different meme coins that you're getting in on, they have no utility. They don't do a damn thing. And the things that you're getting into is fine. You're just making money. But what you're doing is dumping other people. Look, again, you can do whatever you want to. You're making a ton of money. Great. Fantastic. But I will remind everybody of this. Just because a number goes up doesn't mean the project has utility or is worth anything. Because it's not and here's a prime example, Voyager, which I used to talk about quite a bit. And I think it would still be around if it wasn't for that idiotic mistake that they made to, to lend $630 million to Three Arrows Capital and uh, make it uncollateralized. Geniuses. Regardless, the Voyager token is now ranked 456 after dropping out of the top 50 for good reason. But just so you know, uh, as far as the trading volume over the last 24 hours, 16,914,000. Why is this token or any of these tokens even in existence? All it is is speculators trading it back and forth. It has no use case. It has no function. It had a function when Voyager was around, but it doesn't now. So all the different things that are out there, just take a look at what does this thing do? What is its utility? It's okay to make money. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you're going to be investing in the long term, there's a lot better ways to do things which will lead me to my last point. We'll get out of here. All these things we talked about, you might be a little bit shaky, like what do I invest into? What do I, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what I'm doing. The things that I look at that are gonna do pretty well, I can see a store of value for Bitcoin. And heck, I can even see a lot of different plays for layer one solutions. And another thing that layer one solutions can really bring on board is blockchain or web three gaming. This is Nakamoto games. I'm gonna link them in the description. They just announced that they're in the final verification process with Meta, you know, Facebook, for the Facebook gamer profile. Strike Force will go live on May 19th alongside games with 5 million to 15 million players. It'll launch the first ever Web3 game on Meta during the revolution. That remind me of just how big Facebook is. Now, Facebook might be a joke to some people, but just so you know, it's almost got 3 billion people as far as users in the world. It's not bad. Considering we're looking at around 8 billion people, give or take. And that looks pretty good. And you know what else used to be pretty big on Facebook? Stupid games like this. So Farmville, which has been around for, for quite some time, uh, it's only got like 30 million people like this. 20, 20 million people follow this. And just so you know, this was a goofy game. I used, I used to play it, actually. And uh, it uh, was mildly a, a, amusing and fun. But just imagine what's going to happen when you can use and trade crypto and do win to earn, not play to earn, but like a win to earn type of situation, you know what people are going to do? They're going to lose their minds. And the last thing I will say is this, but Rob, we just took a look at Microsoft and all these different places. They're going to build their own chain. Why doesn't Facebook just do that? Because Facebook is smart enough to realize they don't have to build everything from scratch. This is Facebook acquisitions. And from 2005, they made some pretty big plays. I don't know what friend feed is or connect you, but remember Friendster, Chain Labs, Drop.io, sure. Snap.io, MailRank, this little company called Instagram, they picked that up. They could have made that themselves. 
They're not going to do that. They're just going to acquire, acquire, and acquire. And before you know it, they're going to be one of the biggest companies in the entire world. And that's what we have. So to me, I'm pretty bullish on layer ones, Bitcoin, and gaming. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. This is not a set it and forget it. A lot of things going on might behoove you to subscribe. But I want to say I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.